So hormone receptor positive metastatic breast cancer is truly a dynamic disease. I think we've come a very long way from the very first time we realized that anti-estrogen therapies are effective in patients with metastatic disease, which is why we have endocrine agents that are currently approved. But while they work, we realized that there are mechanisms of endocrine resistance, which is why we focused on developing targeted therapy combinations. And the most successful story there has been the introduction of CDK4-6 inhibitors in the treatment armamentarium. What we've now figured is that when we think about utilizing therapies in patients in the second line metastatic setting, so patients who progressed on prior endocrine therapy and were treated in the second line with single agent endocrine agents, the median progression free survival was roughly five months. But we now utilize CDK4-6 inhibitors in the first-line metastatic setting, and that really has improved the progression-free survival to up to 28 months, which is really unprecedented and very impressive. But what we realized is in the second-line metastatic setting, after patients progress on first-line CDK4-6 inhibitor, single-agent endocrine therapy benefit is very, very modest in the order of about two months. So certainly a lot more to be done. We have some signal that maybe in certain patients, potentially re-challenging the tumor with another CDK4-6 inhibitor might be an effective strategy, but randomized phase three trials that are addressing this question more definitively are eagerly awaited. But we have data sets for our agents targeting the PI3K mTOR pathway with alpelisib, a PI3K inhibitor already approved with fulvestrant in the second line space that we use in tumors that harbor the pic 3 ca mutations. There we're seeing a signal of seven months of progression fee survival. And what's the newest data that we've uh, seen in this space with an agent targeting this pathway is with Capiva Sertib, an AKT inhibitor from the Capitello 291 data, where the combination of Capiva Sertib plus fulvestrant again showed us a median PFS of about 7.3 months compared to fulvestrant. This Benefit was seen in the overall patient and also in those with the AKT pathway alterations. So we are yet to hear from the regulatory agencies in which patient population this combination might be approved, which might further really impact the current way of thinking. Last but not the least, we have oral surds. And more recently for tumors with ESR1 mutations, LSSTRANT is approved in the United States for these tumors post-progression on a CDK4-6 inhibitor based on the phase three emerald trial. And those patients who have a durable response and first-line CDK4-6 inhibitors and carried an ESR1 mutation, this benefit was 8.6 months, which is not trivial. So I think we're really, really facing newer data that we could apply. The question is in who should we apply this data and how can we better learn optimal sequencing of these therapies such that we can improve outcomes.